I just designed to allow you to configure your work area to suit how you work. For example, you'll want to set up your machine in hoops. You can also customize settings for designs, measurements, system preferences, and more. We'll cover some initial settings in this lesson. When you first run Hatch, it will come with certain pre-configured settings, whereas other settings are not yet configured. So let's get started. So one of the first things you'll want to do is select your machine model or type. And the way we do that is we just go up here and we select our brand. And these are the most common brands that home embroiderers use. If your brand is not listed here, you can add it and you can add hoops. We won't be covering that in this lesson, but just know that you can do that. Now, if you have Janome or Elna, you'll need to select your specific model. For example, if I have an 11,000, these are the hoops I'll have. If I have a 300, these are the hoops I'll have. Now I happen to have a brother, so I'll choose brother. And now my type is, do I have a single needle or a multi-needle? Well, I have two single needle brothers. One is a dream machine, one is a small 100 millimeter sewing field size. So now when I look at the hoops, I see all the possible hoops that a brother single needle embroidery machine can use. Now, I don't actually have all these hoops, so I'll probably want to narrow that list down. And to do that, I'll click on Options. So I'll go down here to Hoop, and I'll click Add Remove Hoops. And all I need to do is select the hoops that I don't have and move them to this other column. So it's not actually removing them from Hatch, it's just removing them from my list. So I'm going to select all of these, and I'll click the arrow, and now they've been moved from this column over to this column. And I don't think I have that one. I don't have that one or that one. And I don't have any of these three position hoops. Actually, I do for my little machine, but I'm only thinking about my big machine. So let's say that these are the hoops that I have. And I'll just click OK. Click OK again. And now when I click my hoop list, I only see the hoops that I have. So let's look at some other settings. Go to Software Settings, User Interface Settings. This dialog box allows you to set such things as Auto Save, Scrolling Preferences, and more. So I'm going to leave Auto Save as is. I like to show the toolbar names. And I actually use a different program to edit my artwork, so I'm just going to leave that alone. And we have the Start In area. Now with Hatch 3, we now have the new home screen, and the default setting here is the home screen. I'm going to leave it at home screen because I like the home screen. For font list, I'm going to change this to 5 because I like to use more fonts. And we can also change the size of the font as we see it. I'm going to leave it at extra large. And under other, I like the show measure tooltip. I'm going to disable the mouse click and I'm going to enable the crosshair cursor. Now these are my personal settings. You do not have to set yours up the way I'm doing it. We go to grid. I like to have the grid off. It's always easy to turn on and off via the toolbar. And I want show rulers and guides. I do like to have those on all the time. And on the view menu, well, I like all of these things, so we'll leave all of those on. And once again, those are easy to turn on and off via the toolbar up here. And for scroll, I'm going to disable enable auto scrolling, and I'm going to change this to vertical scroll. And this is my mouse wheel behavior. And I'm just used to using this from other programs, so this is just more comfortable or more natural for me to use. And I'll just click OK. Now we'll go to the embroidery settings, and these affect how your designs are handled. If you previously had Hatch 2, the default setting for applique was automatic. Now it's placed under cover stitches, and I do like this placement much better, so I'm going to leave it there. I'll go back to the beginning, Design, and under Recognize Machine File, this is how machine files, your stitch files like PES and VP3 and all of those, get opened. And the default is to convert them into object shapes. I really prefer to leave them as stitches only. 
I don't generally resize machine files. And there is a tool on the edit menu that allows us to do it once it comes in. And sometimes when we convert stitches into object shapes, the original stitches can change. These are good. Group design on insert. I like this feature if I'm bringing in multiple designs because then I can move each design and all its pieces move together. And apply closest join while digitizing. This is a good beginner setting. As you become more advanced or do more intricate work, you might want to disable this. But you can always come in and change these settings from time to time. The edit menu allows you to change where things are copied and pasted to. I'm going to leave that alone. Overlaps. The initial overlap setting is one millimeter here, and the overlap for fill holes is one millimeter here. And I often come in and change these. So these are things that you'll change as you work. We saw applique initially, machine and hoop. We saw this when we were creating our hoops, so this is just another place that you can do that. And the multi-hooping tab will cover in the multi-hooping lessons. Then I'll click OK. Those are all your initial settings. Now you've got your environment set up to work the way you want. There are more settings that we can control, such as the background color and all these different things, and we'll get to those in other lessons. But this will get you started.